welcome again we're doing operations on random on one random variable expectation now our focus now is on the moments so the title of the lecture is moments all right so we have covered the introduction and we defined expectation and now the turn is to go over moments specifically we're going to look at what are moments moments about the origin and central moments We'll look at properties of expectation and we'll focus on the mean, variance, standard deviation, skewness as examples of moments. Just to recall that uh, we defined the expectation and expectation of a function of random variable is given, is, is found by multiplying that function by the PDF in discrete format you have a similar notation instead of the integration we'll have the summation if we can extend this okay to higher order we get what we call the moments for example if you look at the moment about the origin or the nth moment about the origin it's defined to be the following it's the expected value of x raised to power n so if you apply the definition you get x raised to power n multiplied by the bdf and you get the expectation this is called the moment about the origin finding the expected value of x raised to power n and in terms of notation we use m sub n so if n equal to zero or n equal to one we have the first second and third order moments based on the value of n for the discrete example we have similar thing again we are trying to find the expected value of x raised to power n why it has some physical meaning we're going to see later on so again you scale every value of x raised to power n by its probability and then you sum up so based on this mathematical definition what is the value of m0 and the value of uh, m sub 1 if you look at the definition here for m0 you you substitute 0 here so you get m you get the area under the pdf which is basically equal to one and this is why we're not usually interested in finding uh, the we're not usually interested in finding the, uh, the zeroth moment about the origin because we know it's always going to be one here okay so then we are interested in finding other higher order moments for example the first order moment the first order moment about the origin is nothing but the mean if you substitute again here you'll find that this is the definition of the mean now we also have the nth central moment the only difference here i'm marking this with blue just to show that for the case of non-central moments we are having uh, the following definition we're going to subtract the average so we get the non-central expectation so the central expectation uh, so everything remains the same except for the fact that we are here now looking at uh, the mean or we're looking at the expectation of x minus x bar squared or raised to power n in general for the central moment we're going to use mu sub n rather than m sub n once more what's the value of mu 0 and mu 1 if we substitute in the equation 0 we get 1 the area of, of the BDF but mu equal to 1 what's mu equal to 1 that's a more tricky one if you substitute again the power equal to 1 you will find out that we get 0 so in general we are not interested in mu 0 or mu 1 we are interested in higher order second order moment central moment and above so uh, to summarize here are the equations that you need to solve for uh, the non-central moment and the central moment m equal to m sub n or mu sub n i'm also showing four equations because we are including the discrete and the continuous examples we need the following properties for expectations to proceed the first property says that the expected value of a constant is nothing but the constant itself that's kind of obvious but just to make it formal we can find the proof the expected value of c we take c and scale it by the pdf c will be outside the integration the area of the cdf of the pdf is one 
and this is a proof where we got C. So in general, from now on, whenever we have expected value of a constant, the answer will be the constant. We are taking the expectation of something that does not change, so we expect the answer to be C. For um, the second property we'd like to, to state is that um, the expectation operation is linear. So the expectation of two functions scaled will be the individual expectation scaled. So we can uh, assume the linearity of, of the expectation, where A and B are just constant. Once more, we can prove this by substituting into the equation. So we are, we are scaling this by the BDF. We can split the two integration into two parts. We take A, B and outside. Now, uh, we can, what we have here is nothing but the expected value of GX and here the expected value of H of X. So we got our property. In this slide, we have shown that expectation of a constant is constant itself, the constant itself, and the, and the expectation operation is linear. Okay, now let's look at some physics, uh, some physical meaning of those moments, central and non-central moments. Uh, the variance, variance is given a special character as although it's nothing but mu2, we are going to call it sigma sub x squared. X is a random variable of interest and square by definition will know what sigma x is. So sigma x squared is a variance. It's the expected value of x minus x bar squared. This is the, the central moment, second central moment. Now to go from here to here, we're just taking the square first, minus two times first times second, and then square of second. Because expectation is linear operation, I can now split the, uh, the expectation to three parts, and I got the following expression. This is nothing but m2. Now, this, is, this one will give you x bar. So we have minus two x bar squared plus x bar squared, the net is going to be minus x bar squared, which is nothing but m1 squared. So this guy will give us m2. And then the resultant of this would be just minus x bar squared, which is minus m1 squared. So we have seen now that we can write the second central moment in terms of the first two moments around the origin. Second central moment can be found from the first and second moment. This relation will prove to be very handy. The second thing we'd like to share with you here is a standard deviation. The standard deviation is nothing but the, de but the square root of the variance. So in fact, if you want the variance, you square the standard deviation. It's always a positive quantity. It's a, ma it's a measure of deviation. Standard deviation is a measure of spread of the function about the mean. So the larger the value, it means values are spread. The smaller the value, uh, which means that we are concentrated uh, around the mean. The third quantity is, is called the skewness or the skew. The skew is a measure of how skewed the PDF is. So this one is not skewed in the center. It could be right or left skewed. How do we get a, 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 a quantitative measure of the skewness? It's the mu3. It's the third central moment. It's the expected value of x minus x bar raised to the power 3. Okay, it will give you a measure of skewness. It could be positive, 0, or positive, negative, or 0. So if we have symmetric PDF, if we have if f of x is symmetric, then always, oh, not just mu3, in fact, all odd, all odd uh, moments will give you a 0. So with that, we, we can tell why we use odd moments to, to measure skewness. So mu3 will help us to, to know whether the BDF is tilted to the right or to the left, or it's not tilted or skewed. Now, to, uh, just to have a relative measure, we can have what we call the, the skewness coefficient, or just skewness. So this is a skew, this is a skewness or skewness coefficient. It's, it is, uh, it's defined to be mu3, which is a skew, divided by sigma x, raised to power 3. That's called the skewness coefficient. Moments of expectation, ex exponential distribution. So we will apply what we learned before to the exponential distribution. I am recalling the, the exponential distribution here, so that you don't have to, to remember. Mm -hmm. But what we have to do is to find the moments. So for example, the first moment will be x times, I'm writing this in red here, 
times the PDF so because it's zero less than uh, a just starting the integration from a and the answer will be a plus b irrespective of the value of a and, and b so we're making it in a general format m2 will be done in the same way but we're scaling by x square you might need integration by part or integration formulas to perform the integration so we're doing it again in general in terms of a and b we can also find the variance because it's going to be m2 minus m1 squared so if you execute this you get mu2 and the answer to this one is, is supposed to be b squared if you take this minus this is squared the answer should be just b squared similarly we can find other moments uh, m sub 3 we can also find the skewness mu 3 in terms of the or moments uh, about the origin and we can substitute and, and evaluate this to be 2 b raised to power 3 that would be a good exercise for you to practice but since there is nothing uh, magic here it's just a matter of substitution we'll just proceed with assuming that these values are correct can you find the coefficient of skewness how much would be the coefficient of skewness remember it's by definition the skew divided by what it's the skew divided by sigma x cube and that should be 2b cube divided by square root of this which is b raised to the power 3 and then it's always going to be 2 so the, the exponential distribu distribution has a constant skewness of 2 it's not function of a it's not function of b now I'll leave you with this exercise I'll leave you with this practice find the mean and variance for a random variable x that is uniformly distributed between a and b that's our challenge and I'm sure you are up to it and please write your answer in the comment section we have a uniform distribution between a and b okay that's the uniform distribution so the amplitude should be zero outside and it should be one over b minus a so what would be the variance for this one we know that the mean is going to be uh, a plus b over two but the question is what is the variance so please apply the formula apply the definition of the variance and share your answer you can you can google the answer but uh, you challenge yourself first by trying to find it and then compare your answer with with the correct answer for the uniform distribution thank you